don't buy the lies. Silver and gold are real money. This is my warning to America. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Yankee Stacking. You've heard the lies, right? That you know, gold is a, a relic of the past, that, that silver is for pumpers, that uh, manipulation of the metals will never, ever end. You're crazy to be stacking. Uh, preppers are paranoid. The markets aren't overbought. Or, or whatever goes down has to go up. How about this one? Crypto is the new gold. Lies. Lies. And I'm going to give you a dose of the truth here on Yankee Stacking. Again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell. Definitely hit like right now so we can get the word out to all those that are maybe wondering what is the truth when it comes to real money, gold and silver. Well, first, silver and gold are real money. However, as long as the powers that be force their IOUs down our throats, silver and gold will never be seen as real money. That's right, it won't. They're gonna continue to ignore what is mandated in Article 1, Section 8, and Section 10 of our Constitution, that Congress shall have power to coin money, regulate the value thereof, and that no state shall make anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debts. As long as the U.S. has absolute power as the world's reserve currency, Gold and silver will never back this fiat currency. Never. But one day, I believe that's going to change. I believe the dollar's Ponzi scheme is going to end. That silver and gold will once again be seen as real money. Gold is the preferred store of value for the wise Okay, wise, whether it be, you know, uh, wise preppers or wise investors or wise institutional holders or wise central banks who, by the way, still hoard this stuff. That's gold. Silver is the preferred metal for those with admittedly more limited means, but also for those who capitalize on silver's relative cheapness versus gold. It's also for all those who believe that silver will one day be seen as money again. It's also for preppers like me and prepper stackers like me who see this stuff, especially constitutional silver, as a likely barter commodity in a gray market where survival is necessary. No, not during an SHTF scenario. After. Okay, that's why that's why you should be prepping other stuff first. Get your food and water and, and, and seed and coffee and other supplies, backup power, uh, personal protection. Yes, get all that first, but then get yourself some silver, okay? In fact, if, if silver were to become more widely accumulated and, and, and recognized as hard money, then gold's monetary premium over silver would likely dramatically shrink. I mean, today, I think gold trades at about, I think it's 80 times that of the silver price. Historically, it tends to revert to a ratio of around 16 to one. And if that were to happen again, the gains in silver could be explosive. Okay, I said explosive, all right? So I'm compelled to tell you that I am not a silver pumper. That term has such a negative connotation. Uh, it, it describes someone who maybe, you know, knows the future in advance. Someone who, you know, pushes some crazy astronomical numbers about silver. Or someone looking to pump and dump this stuff. 
Guys, I have no crystal ball. I've joked about it. I don't think silver and gold will shoot the moon without an utter collapse of our fiat dollar system. And this whole pumping and dumping thing, that is utter ridiculousness. I warn and hold. I urge you many times to buy precious metals as insurance, not as a get-rich-quick scheme. I want to buy it and keep it. So silver and gold, they're real money, not fiat currency, not this stuff. And speaking of this stuff, there is a war going on over cash. Have you noticed this? I had, I had the discussion with Tim not too long ago. I had it with my dad just the other day. There's no ambiguity here, in my opinion. The goal is to gradually reduce the need for physical currency and then to eliminate it. I'm not wearing a tinfoil hat here, okay? They will force the U.S. public to go 100% digital. It's already happening in other countries. It's starting here. We see this battle in pending legislation with that $600 cash transaction limit that's going to require IRS reporting. It's crazy. We see it with banks charging you to deposit cash with them. And then they give you the third degree when you want to take some of it out. So don't miss this. Central planners, whether it be uh, the Fed, um, the Bank for International Settlements, BIS, uh, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Have you heard of that one? OECD. The World Bank, the IMF, the G7. They are all actively planning and testing the transformation of our current monetary system. The BIS. The four central banks will soon begin testing the use of digital currencies for cross-border transactions. Australia. Singapore, Malaysia, South Africa, as I mentioned before, it will start with cross-border transactions between nations, but it will be pushed down to you and me, the masses. And it's going to be gradual at first, okay? They're not going to say you can't use any cash, all right? That, that would cause panic. But just like an aging Hollywood celebrity, cash's obituary has already been written. They won't admit it publicly, but it's going the way of the phone book, guys. This is going to allow all transactions to be tracked and taxed in real time. Forget your anonymity. Forget your privacy. Forget tax withholdings. Shoot, the IRS will already know exactly what you owe to the penny. And they'll just deduct it before you even see it. Now, I know all you crypto hodlers out there, <laughs> you think you've got the answer. It's Bitcoin. Really? Do you really think a private decentralized currency will win the day? Do you really think that Bitcoin will be adopted by billions all around the world? Do you really think the powers that be will ever allow that to happen? Do, do you really? <laughs> do you really think that, that, that central banks will quietly just like roll over and let Bitcoin or some know, stable coin become the predominant currency? Or, or get this, I, I've heard this too, that, that they'll actually adopt it as their legal tender, <laughs> we'll, we'll get paid in Bitcoin. We'll see our, our groceries priced in Bitcoin. We'll pay our taxes in Bitcoin. No, Bitcoin will not be adopted by billions all around the world. It's not going to be allowed to succeed by central banks as a competitive currency. I'm trying not to laugh, but it's it's laughable. They're not going to, you know, sell their gold and buy up satoshis. And and nothing of real value is ever 
going to be priced in Bitcoin. That would be lunacy. We're not going to get paid by our employers in Bitcoin or pay our taxes in Bitcoin or, or any other current decentralized crypto. It will only be hodled and gambled with as a get-rich-quick scheme. So wake up from the fantasy. It's a bubble, the biggest bubble we have ever seen in history. And there are two bullets that will take out this mother of all bubbles. One to the chest, one to the head. The first bullet is government regulations. And regulations are coming hard. First, against stable coins. That's the first target, okay? But it's, it's coming to all cryptocurrencies eventually. Regulations designed to shut down any threat to their hegemony before it gains any more traction. <laughs> That's the first bullet. The second bullet is the CBDCs, the Central Bank Digital Currencies. If you think this is good for current crypto, you're deluding yourself. As Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said back in July, quote, you won't need stable coins. You won't need cryptocurrencies if you had a digital U.S. currency, end quote. And that's true. The, ta the tactic is not to panic people by shutting down crypto exchanges, although they can do that quite easily. No, it's to regulate it into submission and relegate it to insignificance. Let me say that again. This is really important. This is the goal here with crypto. It's to regulate it into submission and relegate it to insignificance. It'll be obsolete with CBDCs. So if you want to gamble with Bitcoin or Ethereum or uh, XRP, I see that a lot, or Litecoin or Tether or Monero or Dogecoin, whatever, go ahead, try and make a million dollars in the crypto casino. But don't kid yourself. All of them will eventually find their intrinsic value. Zero. Not that the fiat dollar is any better, mind you. I know that. So, you know, don't try arguing that in the comments below. But yeah, this is, this is fiat currency. It's not much better. History tells us that all fiat monetary systems also eventually revert back to their intrinsic value zero, they all fail, sometimes slowly, sometimes spectacularly all at once, but they all have an expiration date. And after hours sadly expires due to decades of misuse, I think you're going to want silver and gold. Silver for barter and gold for generational wealth preservation. They've got thousands of years of history behind them. And that should instill a great deal of confidence. I really hope you enjoyed this video slash rant. <laughs> Please like and leave a respectful comment down below. And as always, I hope your day is a-okay.